Hello and welcome to my first video. Today we're going to be looking at the best UK apps to invest for beginners with small amounts of money. So we're going to look at the two most popular apps, which are Trading212 and eToro. To do this, I'm going to break it down into nine different categories and compare each. So if you want to skip to the summary at the end, I'll leave a timestamp now so you can do that. Before we get started, this comparison does not include CFD accounts. So on Trading212, this only includes the investment ISA and the invest account. And on eToro, where they're combined, we're just talking about the normal features. The first category is referral codes. Trading212 has a referral program which allows you to get free shares by referring friends. So I have a link in the description there. If you signed up with that link, you would get a free share and I would get a free share. So you can do this with your friends, your family, if you get them to sign up, and you can get multiple free shares, so you can actually increase the amount of money you have by quite a lot, especially if you only start with a small amount. In order to qualify for this free share, all you need to do is deposit one pound. It's not worth not doing. So even if you have no long-term plans to invest, put in one pound, get your free share, then sell it, then take the money out. You've made up to 100 pounds profit there. Before eToro, there was no referral program within the UK. There is one for various other countries, so you may want to look that up if you're not from the UK. But for the UK, you can't get anything for free, unfortunately. So this point is going to go to Trading212. The second category is fees. Both platforms are, are commission free. The second category is fees. <laughs> the second category is fees. Both platforms are commission free, so you won't lose any money when opening or closing trades. If you want to deposit on Trading212, it's free with bank transfer and instant bank transfer. If you want to use credit card, debit card, Apple Pay or Skrill, then it is a small fee of 0.7% after you've deposited £2,000. You have to pay stamp duty on UK stocks. If you have the Invest account, that's going to be 0.5%. If you have the Invest ISA, you won't have to pay this as this is a tax shielded account. The minimum deposit and withdrawal amount on Trading212 is £1. eToro has no deposit fees at all. They do, however, charge a $5 flat rate withdrawal fee. They also charge inactivity fees, which means if you haven't logged on to your account in over 12 months, then for every month after that, you get charged $10. So if you're the type to just set and forget, this might be something to bear in mind. However, that being said, if you have invested all the money in your account, they won't close any open positions in order to pay that fee. You don't pay any stamp duty on eToro. This is all covered. The minimum deposit amount for your initial investment to open your account is $200, which is quite a lot. However, after that, you can deposit $50 as the minimum. The minimum withdrawal fee is $30. The next category is ease of deposit and withdrawal. As mentioned before, you can use bank transfer, instant bank transfer, Apple Pay, credit card, debit card, or Skrill to put money into your Trading212 account. The instant bank transfer is very quick and very easy, and was very simple. Withdrawals, however, take around two to three business days, which is standard for all brokerages. With eToro, you can deposit just as easily and quickly, and you can also do it with PayPal and Neteller. I've never heard of it, but somebody might have. However, with withdrawals, it's slightly different. You have to input your primary method of withdrawal, so that might be the bank account you want the money to go to. But you also have to put a secondary one. I'm not sure why they do this, but it's quite annoying. It just adds to the process and makes it take even longer. When I tried to do it myself, it had glitched and there was some kind of bug, so I couldn't input my second method of transfer. Uh, so it wouldn't let me take my money out. So that was slightly disconcerting, uh, but I do think it is fixed now. Uh, also, they do make it very difficult to withdraw your money from eToro. They ask you about four times why you're investing or why you're withdrawing your funds. They say, oh, can we do this to change it? Have you tried this? It does just give the impression that they don't want you to take your money back, which isn't really what you want to feel with your kind of investment app. So for me, this point is going to go to Trading212. Next, we have the user interface. So on Trading212, everything feels very smooth and very aesthetic. It has a light mode, a dark mode, and it's very easy to use and read the charts. You can slide your finger along to read the price and at what date. On eToro, 
everything's not quite as smooth. It just feels slightly clunky. Everything seems a bit less accessible and hard to navigate around. You can again look at charts and read it by sliding your finger along to see the price at different times, except it just feels a bit more glitchy. Uh, I've been using eToro for a month or two now, and I still feel like I haven't even used half the features or don't know how they work. So for me, the accessibility and the kind of just general ease of use is quite heavily in favor of trading two on two on this one. So for this, we're gonna give the point to trading two on two. The next category is the range of instruments available. So both have a wide variety of stocks available. However, trading two on two does have slightly more. They also offer more exchange traded funds or ETFs. So that's kind of a big plus for trading two on two. However, eToro does have commodities and cryptocurrencies available to buy within the one account. On Trading212, you can't get these on the Invest and Invest ISA accounts. You have to have a CFD account, which I wouldn't recommend as 76% of people who do that lose money. Um, so eToro is kind of your one-stop shop if you want to dabble in a bit of cryptocurrency, you want to look at some commodities, that's the kind of place to do that. So we're gonna give this one to eToro. Next we have opening and closing trades. So both platforms, they offer fractional shares. So if you want to buy some Amazon, you don't have to drop three and a half K, you can just buy a hundred quid of it. So that's really good. Um, on Trading212, it has a very obvious buy and sell button. Within that, they also have market orders, limit orders, stop orders, and stop limit orders. So you get everything there. Although they don't have a stop loss and take profit, you can just set this by going to sell and then setting a sell limit order, which is essentially the same as the take profit and the stop loss. However, they just make it a bit more complicated, so you would have to calculate the amount of profit you would in fact make. eToro is the same, simple buttons, buy and sell, with the uh, limit orders, market order, stop and stop limit. However, they do just have a take profit and stop loss. They just simplify it slightly. So here you can select how much profit. So you can say, I want to close this position when I've made 20 quid profit. So it does just simplify it. And so for that aspect, we're gonna give this one to eToro. The next thing we'll compare is the websites of both. Trading 2 on 2's website is a huge step backwards from their app. It's not as simple, it's not as aesthetic, it's harder to kind of view everything, and the format of, all, of it all it just isn't as good. I don't really like it that much. That being said, they do have a beta for a new kind of website design, which you can find in a community tab that I'll show here. And this makes it look so much nicer, and makes it look like the app. So this kind of raises it back up a bit. eToro, on the other hand, huge improvement from their app. Feels a lot less clunky, quite easy to navigate. You can find all the features quite easily. So based on this, I think we're gonna give eToro this, as although Trading212's web app, the one that you can access that's in beta, is really quite good, that's not the base edition of the website yet. So we're gonna go with eToro. The next category is customer support. If you're putting your money into a platform, you want to know that it's safe, and if there is any problems, you can contact somebody and they can help you quickly. This is what this section is gonna be about. This section won't include any opinions based on the public and on the events that have taken place regarding the GameStop shenanigans. Um, so we're going to pretend that didn't happen and that's not going to influence this section at all. So for Trading212, the instant web chat uh, feature is really useful. I've used it before just when I was starting out to ask questions about how the app works and just little tips there. And people in the Trustpilot forums have been saying the same thing. They found it really good, really helpful. Uh, and the general community feedback in the, the forums seem quite good for Trading212. eToro, on the other hand, not as good. As I mentioned, I had a bit of trouble with them with withdrawing money, and it seems that other people have experienced the same thing. When I put in a customer service request, it took over well over 24 hours for them to even get back to me at all. And given that my money was kind of out with my control, it wasn't a great feeling. You want them to be kind of there quickly and someone to be able to contact you. Um, they apparently have taken down their instant chat feature or web chat feature, so that's another negative really. Uh, so based on the Trustpilot ratings as well, eToro is only at 1.7, whereas Trading212 is at 3.0. It's quite a big difference there as well. So this one is really quite an easy point for Trading212. The final category is additional features. 
Trading 212's most notable feature that we haven't mentioned yet is the recent addition of Pies. What this is, is like a homemade ETF. You can select different stocks, put it in your pie, and then you can select what percentage that these stocks are weighted. So for example, if you wanted to make a pie with three stocks, you could have Amazon, Apple, and Netflix. Say you want 50% of the money you put into this pie to go to Amazon, then you can have 25% to go to Netflix and 25% to Apple. So you can just consistently input money every month, for example, and it will keep splitting it in this proportion. You can also browse other people's pies. So you can have a look through, see if the, anyone else has created one that aligns with your investing views, and you can use them as well. eToro's most notable feature is the copy trading feature, which is a very unique thing that I haven't come across before. So essentially, you can look at the most popular investors on the platform, and you can then choose to copy them with an allocated amount of funds. So you could choose to copy someone with $500. So that means you will do all the exact same trades as they do, but just in proportion to the amount of money you have. This is quite an interesting aspect and makes it a bit more passive. So if you're not too sure about investing or you just want to put some money in and leave it, you can pick someone with a lower risk rating and just let them do the work. It's something that I haven't tried yet, but I do plan on trying. Um, and for this one, we're going to give the point to eToro for their slightly more unique and slightly more interesting feature. Final thing to note that I haven't included in the comparison, because it just really depends on what you're after from a platform, is that eToro is much more of a social trading platform. So they have a part of the app and website where you can post your own thoughts about certain stocks or market movements. So this means you can discuss with like-minded people about what's happening in the investment world. So this can be quite a good thing if you're looking to immerse yourself and learn lots more from other people. However, always just do be wary about taking advice from strangers online. So very quickly, to summarize. In Trading 212, you can get free stocks. eToro is slightly higher frees, but both are commission free. Depositing and particularly withdrawing is easier on Trading 212. User interface is better on Trading 212. However, on eToro, you can use crypto and commodities. Opening and closing trades, better on eToro due to the take profit and stop loss features. Both websites are equal if you're using the Trading 212 web app, not the base website. But since it is still in beta, eToro's base website is better. Customer support appears to be eToro's biggest letdown and can take a while to have issues sorted, which could be stressful. And finally, the eToro copy trader function marginally trumps Trading 212's Pies feature due to its uniqueness. Overall, Trading 212 wins 5-4, but this doesn't mean it's the better platform. It's just all about what you want to get from it. eToro, for example, is a great place for a one-stop shop. If you want to dabble in a bit of everything, this could be the place for you. Trading 212, however, has a slightly better user interface and easier to use. So this might be better for first-time investors. It's all about what you want, and if you can't decide, just use both. So thank you for watching guys. If you have found this video valuable and of any help whatsoever, then please leave a like and comment down below what you thought of it. I will see you in my next video. In Surround, what's, what's the word? Not engulf. In... I can't think of the word. Immerse, that's your son.